Howdy friends, Pete here. As you've likely heard, Dio Odalecki, the founder of Greater Cleveland Cop Block, is now caged in Parma, just on the outskirts of Cleveland. Last night I spoke with Adamo Freeman about Dio's situation. Adamo has been on the ground in Ohio and very active with Dio in and around the Cleveland area, and I thought none better than Adamo to give us a recap of, of what's going on and potentially how we can help Dio. So without further ado. Dio Odalecki, Doug Odalecki, uh, is the founder of Greater Cleveland Cop Lock, as well as Ohio Cop Lock, and, an, and has also assisted a number of other folks start their Ohio-based uh, offshoots. More recently, uh, he's become more active as a Cop Lock Network contributor, as well as taking over the duties of the coplock.org store. Um, as well as all that, uh, you know, about two years ago, Dio started facing some clear harassment uh, from the Parma Police Department, Parma, the uh, suburb of Cleveland in, in which he lives, um, to the point where every time he would film them, there would be some sort of, you know, jaw jacking or, or intimidation, another squad car coming up, parking close to him, you know, and so on. All that can be seen at his YouTube channel, Greater Cleveland Cop Lock on YouTube. Um, Yet yeah, none of that ever got physical or ended in arrest until about two years ago, uh, almost three actually to the day, uh, when Dio was out cop blocking a uh, police OVI checkpoint, as they're called here in Ohio. Um, for those unaware, cop blocking a checkpoint is sometimes rather simple. You hold a sign, says turn now, police ahead or checkpoint ahead, and uh, you would stand at the uh, first avail the last available intersection for the motorist to turn to avoid the checkpoint. That's exactly what Dio was doing in uh, 2013. And the police, upset with the, I, in my opinion, effectiveness of Dio's sign, meaning not getting many uh, motorists coming through their checkpoint, uh, which means they were not getting as much revenue for things that they... Uh, would normally ticket you for like not having a license, failure to register, et cetera. And instead of the OVI aspect that they cloak it in, but upset about that, a couple of police officers from Parma approached Dio and said he had to remove the sign at at least a bare minimum, take out or cross out the words turn now. Dio refused. They cited him for obstruction of justice and you know, stalled that case really long, which is important. Uh, you know, I think that was a, a slight mistake in the uh, strategic part as far as the court system is concerned, is that a motion maybe to uh, ask for a speedy trial or drop it for lack thereof might have been valuable at this point because they really dragged their feet on it because, in my opinion, this is the uh, arrest of deals that is the most sound that he could have beat. And I think they were trying to entrap him into another case to begin with. Um, you know, before I talk about the second time Dio was arrested, you know, I've been in Cleveland with him periodically throughout last summer. And I know that when we were filming Parma police on a couple of occasions that they would try to escalate the situation. And the best example I can show you that is there is a video where I held a F the police sign, uh, during a traffic stop that I filmed. And on the face of that video, everyone says that, you know, I'm, I'm uh, being disrespectful to cops and this isn't uh, accountability based. But if you watch from the start of that video, Dio and I found that cop doing a speed trap. His interaction with us is more standoffish and, uh, you know, that, you know, we're like second class people to him. Um, and then, in fact, when I was trying to explain to him maybe some alternatives to his current choice of employment, uh, he drove off to catch a speeder which is a victimless crime, which is something we were just talking about. And I, I, in my personal opinion, he did that despite. And so escalating the situation. And then we went and filmed it and he uh, told the driver some things. And so it escalated to the point where I held the sign. And I believe the Parma police officer was escalating it because he wanted myself and or Dio more particularly to get some sort of catch all charge. Move forward from that incident about a month or two. Dio is coming home from lunch down the street at one of his favorite restaurants, notices about 10 to 15 uh, emergency type vehicles and personnel standing around a bridge. So he starts filming like he would and walks up and realizes that there's some Parma police officers there and some, you know, mother and some, you know, teenagers. And immediately the police come at him and uh, tell him that he can't film because it's a minor, which is a lie. They admit it in court that it was a lie and they know that they can lie to you. 
Uh, when that didn't work, they asked Dio to go across the street. He swore at them and said things he didn't like, but he ultimately complied. And as he was walking across the street, still continued to cuss them out. Uh, you know, n nothing like insane, but, you know, cussing nonetheless. And that's when the police then reapproached him and uh, arrested him, but put three more charges on him. At the first checkpoint, he got obstruction of justice. At the uh, bridge incident, uh, he got obstruction of justice, disorderly conduct, and interfering with a medical emergency. Uh, and what was going on at the bridge is that allegedly a teen was uh, claiming to uh, want to commit suicide by jumping off the bridge. But when Dio arrived, four or five officers have, were around the kid. He was not on the bridge anymore. He was sitting on the guardrail. It was, uh, in my opinion, and from my understanding of the testimony of the officers, a nearly completed scene uh, at the time of Deal's arrival. So um, I don't know how he's interfering with the medical emergency, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, again, both these videos can be viewed uh, at coplock.org and uh, or uh, Greater Cleveland Coplock's YouTube channel. But subsequently, uh, Dio ended up going to trial about seven months after the second incident, but they combined the two now. And so the first case, which in my opinion is a slam dunk case, by having asking a guy to remove turn now from a sign is like asking Pizza Hut to remove $5 lunch sale from their sign. You know, it would be pointless and it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a restriction of a natural right, in my opinion, or even their status rights. Anywho, um, and so they combined them and then painted the whole trial was more of a, um, you know, it was a, it was a character trial. It wasn't about the law or whether or not Dio has a right to either film police or, you know, stand on the corner with a sign. Um, it was more that Dio is a bad person who harasses cops, who needs to be taught a lesson that was keeping them from doing their jobs. And we understand that they need to be able to do their jobs, right? They have to be able to do their jobs. You know, the jury was asked that multiple times in selection, which was really weird. Um, and so even though it was perceived the judge was being fair in the beginning of the trial, all that doubt was taken away at the end when Dio, uh, when she gave Dio not only the max on all four charges since he was found guilty by the jury, but she ran them consecutively, which is unheard of normally for class B misdemeanors, meaning less than a year in jail is what you can face on these, uh, less, or six months or less, excuse me, is what you can face on these charges for class B misdemeanors. So normally if you like rob five liquor stores or break into five houses, they will give you five burglary charges consecutively because there's, it's, it's actually more common when there's victims, although it's not guaranteed either. But uh, with misdemeanors, they're almost always, and in fact, Ohio law even states that at some times they have to be. And so that's another basis of Dio's appeal that all the charges on the one day, the three charges of the one day, uh, on Ohio law, since they are misdemeanors, may have had to been run consecutive or concurrently, but that just goes to show that the judge and the prosecutors, it was all about um, protecting the boys in blue and their feelings and or their their way of business, which is you know generate revenue by violating people's rights and or you know extorting, harassing them. Like you said, protecting the boys in blue. Um, I thought of that earlier today when I was reviewing your post about Dio's situation and I noticed that both his, uh, the address you noted for him to receive mail, which is the Parma police cages and uh, the place where the person in the black dress said that Dio was guilty of some things even though he hadn't caused any victims and, and she therefore said he had to be caged. The addresses for both where that justice was supposedly wetted out and where Dio is now caged is the same. It's like the same building. And so like it just, there's no, no, uh, you know, separation. These guys all work for the same, like work for the same ends just to protect each other and grow their own spheres of influence. Yeah. Yeah. The first day she like uh, got Dio a coffee and he was like, wow, you know, like what other judges gotten you a coffee, you know? And I was like, well, you, you might just want to wait, but you know, you were, you hit the nail on the head there. The, courthouse police department and jail is all one building and they're literally like top level mid level bottom level and uh it's sickening when you like know how it all works and you look at it like a machine so yeah so you noted the uh 
like, I, I guess I'm curious, what do you think could have been done differently? And I know it's, you know, we, we won't ever know, but uh, you, you mentioned that maybe if Dia would have pressed to uh, have his first threat levied against him dismissed or have a speedy legal land venture that may have then removed it. Is there anything else um, you think? Yeah, like well, for First, I'd like to say that I don't, you know, like I try not to say like this was done wrong or this was that. I know I do do it to myself in my own self reflections. But at first, I just like to say like we can only learn from things, right? And so, if there, what could we learn from this whole thing as it transpired? Like first, um, I think Dio made a mistake the day that he filmed on July 29th. Uh, by recording only to his phone and not utilizing either Bamboozer or Cell 411. Now, Cell 411 wasn't a reality on the day that that happened, so he may have been using that, but Bamboozer mo most certainly because um, it took four or five months bef you know, after the that, that happened to get the video, and at that time, uh, you know, the, there wasn't much that could be done. The balls, the, the, both his cases already been joined, the trial date was even set, uh, and, and as you and I can attest to, Pete, when you get that footage out right away and early, it was just an example yesterday with Brett Sanders, you know, uh, you can get reactions that are more favorable to you quicker. Uh, the, the state's hooks are not set to you. They haven't got a couple of cases in the ball rolling and they can bail out a lot more easy. Yeah, they, they don't have the uh, comfort of having months of time to frame the reality of what they claim went down and to uh, prevent you from doing right. the same with that objective record. And they're also less invested. So, you know, like I mentioned yesterday, Brett Sanders was arrested down in Texas tech of, of Texas cop lock. And he, uh, we were told when he was first arrested that he would see a judge the following day, even though, even on Sunday. Um, but yet he ended up being released at, you know, like five or six hours after that. And some on the ground uh, noted the call flood and pressure. So, uh, he utilized cell 411, which you can get at uh, get cell411.com. And then that allowed other people in his cells to get the video out, which in this case was myself, and then produced that video in a format that folks could then make the decision with the information to call and act on it. And so had Dio done that back in July, they might not have gotten to the point to combine his two cases, which means at the trial, they might not have uh, been so effective at painting him as this uh, police harasser bad boy um, and so that's one thing I think we, that I've learned from that is that definitely utilize the live stream features that you have if you have them um, as far as well, go ahead yeah that's a good point and so uh, I guess what would you add on like in addition to the uh, technical tactical uh, suggestions that you've noted like the encouragement to stream and particularly to use uh, cell phone on one which is now free on Android and iOS but uh, what is what is like a, the, one of the takeaways you see, or how would you see this through like a non-status lens? Like uh, you know, because Dio was supposedly said to be guilty of all these things, obstruction of justice. But in reality, it was him who was like victimized by these, you know, who was who had his rights violated. His property was stolen. He was he was kidnapped and caged. And uh, you know, I, I guess is do you have any takeaways? Has this case like caused you to? think any different or just reinforce your thoughts on that sort of an angle? Oh yeah, it's, it's definitely reinforced because, you know, I've been where Dio's been and, you know, I saw some of this coming, you know, uh, if you, if you read uh, Dio's uh, first blog from jail, you know, he talks heavily about how this just shattered all idea that the system had any ounce of right in it. And, uh, you know, as I had mentioned earlier, he, talked to me, you know, he had a two day trial. And so on those first two nights after the case, like these good points were made. And, you know, the judge was, was being friendly to our, our, our cause here. And, you know, at the end when she had her closing, I didn't touch on this exactly. And I'm glad that we brought it up. She said things like, I cannot protect the police forever, but I can for a little while. And then gave Dio the max sentence. You know, and so the whole everything before that was, you know, a facade. It was all fake. It was a curtain. It was smoke and mirrors. And um, and so, you know, for me, I, I, I knew that I've been in that end. I've seen it a number of times. I, I saw it when he was picking the jury and he, the, he was asking the jury uh, questions like police should be able to have a police checkpoint. Right. 
And that's a, a, a major leading question. Like I actually wrote a note. This is my first strike in court before I got kicked out and gave it to Dio's defense team because I was telling him to object to that because that's he just tainted a whole jury pool because this whole thing isn't about checkpoints. And he just asked them all if police should always be able to do their job. You know, and, and that was a major penalty. Wow. So the person that supposedly adjudicated the justice there who said she she can't protect the police forever, but at least for a little while, um, you think about it, like in both the two incidents that you named, uh, Dio uh, holding a sign at a checkpoint to warn drivers and then Dio seeing uh, a number of badge wearing folks, you know, who who subsist on stolen money and threats and things like around some folks. So Dio chose to film the situation. So in both of those cases, he was taking it upon himself to look out for strangers in his community. Uh, but in fact, the uh, this person has the gall to say that that she can't protect these people, you know, as if Dio's a bad guy. Right. Well, yeah. And so not only that, but yes, like in both the videos, Dio, like, yes, he, he like walked towards the scene, but like, who actually approached who is in both cases, the police came all to Dio's personal space. Dio never went to their personal space. He went to their area. He was observing their area. They then came to his personal space. And so I don't know how, like they're, she, how could she be protecting them uh, from that? But another thing that was very, you know, uh, 1984 in the courtroom was when the prosecutor was telling the jury, this is your community. You know, you have the decision to help affect your community. And so like, this is again, the questions when selecting the jury, this isn't in an opening or closing statements, which I found really weird because normally when the state or even the defense is asking a jury questions, it's like, have you heard of cop block? Oh, I have. Okay. We don't want you on the jury. Or like, are you a police employee? I am, Well, we don't want you on the jury. But he was like leading them to like, if you're on this jury, do you believe DUI checkpoints are good? And I'm like, I've never heard anything like that. And I've like, I've been in plenty of courtrooms over this. And so it was really also ironic when he was saying that about community. This is your community and you have a thing because I, does he not realize that it's also Dio's community, you know? And uh, in fact, uh, <laughs> Dio is more active in the community towards good than any of those people in that building, you know, that are the, the paid actors. Right. If I seem to, if I recall correctly, the, the uh, person who stole Dio's sign and, and threatened him the initial time uh, when he was at the checkpoint was uh, uh, said he even be guilty in these systems of injustice of uh, violating a teenager's rights. And, uh, you know, some months ago that and uh, and folks in the area had to cough up for his his uh, misdeeds because he has a badge. So he's not responsible. Yeah. I mean, uh and so Dio mentioned that in one of the videos that, hey, you were the guy that hit the kid with the flashlight for $40,000. And so I don't know exactly what part of that statement was false, but the state filed a motion saying like, well, this isn't exactly correct. And so the judge allowed to have that part muted. So the jury couldn't hear that the, and uh, that the cops have had these, you know, black eyes on their record or marks on their record. But when the state wanted to introduce a video not of any of the arrests, but uh, they went off of Dio's YouTube channel and found the best of his best, you know, so they edited up a video to make him look like this, you know, uh, you know, annoying, hyperactive, uh, you know, overly cussing cop locker. And so that, so this is how the trial went. On one hand, you couldn't talk about anything bad the police did, but the state got to bring in a video that they edited up of their choice to frame what they wanted the jury to think of what this man looked like, but you couldn't bring in like this guy had been sued, this guy had been sued. And uh, I thought that was really important. I, and I, I also encouraged John to, you know, argue that heavily because the judge said when she was, she said, she said when she was making the, that audio segment be muted, she said, you know, I'm not going to have things from outside of the, these days, these arrests be brought into this case. But then she let them bring in a video of three and a half years of cop blocking edited down to four minute video. Yeah, it's pretty so, telling. It's pretty it's pretty clear for folks that uh, are paying attention. Right. And so, you know, t since we talked about a couple of things that were bad, you know, I think that would be one of the things that were good. And it's what I've been telling Dio while in jail. Like you might go through a lot of these hardships and yet. Uh, I believe it's been well documented. Many sources have talked about Dio and his, you know, insane uh, sentence. 
uh, folks, I think, will read this story and come to the conclusion that you and I are discussing that all of this was a farce. It wasn't about justice. I mean, if they really wanted to lock him up, why they do it three years ago? And he could have got, got it done with, you know? It's kind of like Brian and I advocated in Noblesville during our arraignment. You know, forget your pleas, forget your sentencing and your bonds. Like, if you think I should be in jail, tell me for how long and shut the door today. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because it's stupid. If it's either that cut and dry or this is all just a, a farce. And so, you know, this story, as opposed to some in the past, much better documented. Uh, Dio is continuing to document also from the inside with his first jail blog. I got another one about double standards to write and uh, his, uh, you know, the usual uh, jail hypocrisies. And so, uh, and people will learn to see that the system isn't, you know, doing what it purports. So though Dio is caged, it sounds, uh, I think you told me that he can uh, get visitors uh, most days. Is that correct? Do you want to maybe let viewers know if uh, they're within driving distance of Parma and they want to go stop by and, and chat sure. with Dio? The best way to tell you and the quickest way would just be to simply Google Parma, excuse me, simply Google Parma Detention Center and it'll pop up, and then right there on the when you click that top link, uh, there'll be an FAQ at the, the top right, and it'll tell you the hours, which are basically the same, but it's uh, Saturday, Sunday they have visits, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, and um, but it has all the information, the ID you'll need, show up a half hour early in case you don't uh, remember this. Parma Detention Center FAQs. Uh, it's also linked in the main blog, uh, which I. Can't remember the short URL off the top of my head for it. Yeah, it's cool. it might be deals arrest or or jail. I can't remember. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll link to that in the video description, and uh, I guess I would also uh, say if folks are not within driving distance, um, there there's also he can get snail mail. So if you want to send him a letter or just send him some love, I think you'd appreciate that. Yep. And so right now his case just sits that he's uh it's the appeal has been filed. Uh, they're hoping to have a hearing that will allow the appeal the appellate court to put him out on bond again because of the duration that it will take to finish the appeal will be longer than his sentence is even though his sentence is uh extremely long for the charges um it won't uh it will it will be shorter than the appeal of court than the swift so, than the swift gears of justice <laughs> exactly and so We'll see how that goes, um, but other than that, um, you know, there might be a legal defense fund that will be raised uh, coming in the in the beginning of next month, um, and uh, that will be done from Dio's attorneys directly. And so they'll they'll create a GoFundMe page, and then I'll kind of put together a how you can help Dio blog at the website. And like Pete mentioned, uh, you can write him. Um, letters or be on the lookout for a a sine wave and be the uh first checkpoint that uh, parma police have this year uh we'll be there to cop block it because there's no way holding a sign that says turn now is illegal and so it's my understanding that deals in a pod all by himself so maybe 50 cop lockers can show up with turn now signs and bring them some company <laughs> Right on a demo. I well, appreciate the time and the update. We'll be on the lookout for more content that you and others familiar with the situation put out. And hopefully we'll be seeing both you and Dio and lots of other good folks um, up at Porkfest in June. But uh, hopefully right. before that. All right, dude. All right, brother. Be well. Peace, man. Peace. Peace.